Hey, what's up? I'm Grace Weber, and you're on the set of my music video for my song Played Yourself, and this is Behind the Dream. My dream growing up was to be a singer. I have been singing for as long as I can remember. When I was little, I used to sing around the house constantly. Um, I actually set up my stuffed animals in the basement when I was like five in stadium seating and I would like tape a flashlight to the wall, like a spotlight, and I would perform in front of all of my fluffy stuffed animal friends and uh, pretend I was singing in a stadium. So singing, being a singer and artist has been my dream since forever. Having this dream since, you know, I was such a little girl has been an amazing thing. It's been a blessing because I've always known what my path is and was. I always um, felt this passion about music and art. And, you know, my grandpa um, was a musician when I was, so when I was growing up, he used to, you know, play the piano and me and all my cousins would sing around the piano. So music just always felt like family and love and all these things. And so it's always been like a beautiful guide, guider in my life. But the flip side of it is, you know, like, because I had this dream so young, um, as I started to get into the industry, being a singer and an artist, like it became so a part of my identity that it, I started saying instead of like, oh, that would be fun to do, you know, whatever the thing was, it became like, I have to do that. Oh no, if I, if I don't get this gig, like, what is that gonna mean for who I am? Like, I, I, I lost my way a little bit, focusing too much on the outcomes instead of just the joy of being an artist and singing like I had when I was a little kid. Um, so I had to unlearn that. And a quote that really helped me was, replace ambition with curiosity. And so anytime that I'm thinking of, of the next gig that I might do or something that's coming around the corner and I start getting a little bit too attached to it, I'll say, um, you know, that, that would be cool if that happened. Or I wonder what that would be like instead of like, that has to happen. And that has really opened up my world. And honestly, it has helped me manifest and um, I've noticed much more things are aligning when I'm in that sort of non-attached space. I think you can get out of the cycle of overthinking and, and over worrying, even though it's really hard to do. I'm always practicing it. First of all, it's a practice, but by changing your perspective on something, with, which is something that Charlie talks about a lot, um, switching up the way that the question is phrased, so, or the sentence is phrased, like, Again, like, I have to get this gig. Say like, what if I get this gig? That would be fun. Like, it, it'll instantly trigger a different way of thinking about the situation. And I think it will, it can help you let go of the have to's and embrace the what ifs. I draw inspiration from so many different things from the experiences that I go through in my life. Um, inspiration from the musicians that I work with. Um, one of my favorite stories that I tell all the time is when I first met Nate Fox, who's a producer with The Social Experiment, who produced my upcoming album, or my album that just came out. <laughs> uh, Nate, when we were sitting in the studio, Nate handed me an SM57 microphone while I was sitting on the couch. And he opened up a session and started creating a beat. And he said, just sing when you're inspired. And like that mindset of like not um, putting too much pressure on what you're creating, like just trust your inspiration became like, it became how we made the album. Like just follow your bliss, follow your inspiration. And so a lot of times like when I think about, okay, I need to get inspired um, to create something. The first step is often just like getting in the right headspace of being open because every little breadcrumb, like I like to say, is um, something that's gonna lead you to the, to the outcome of whatever you're creating. So just follow those little breadcrumbs of inspiration. Trust when you're feeling something. You know, I'll listen to like 10 different beats as I'm writing and um, go through all nine and feel like, oh, like nothing's really coming to me. Like no melodies are coming, no stories are coming, I don't know. And then the 10th beat will come up on, in the session and all of a sudden like an entire chorus melody will come to me. Like actually when I wrote Through the Fire, Garen Langford, who was the producer on that one, he pulled up the beat for that and right away, um, this melody hit in my head like, I'll burn my way through the fire. And I was like, oh, that's cool. Like, let's follow that. And that was like the breadcrumb that we picked up and started building the song around. And that led me to like, I'll burn my way through the fire. This song should be about resilience. Okay, what are some stories in my life 
about resilience? What are some stories in my sister's life or other people I know where they've been pushing and fighting for something? Um, let's put that into the song. So yeah, that's how I find my inspiration, just being open and, and following the path. <laughs> I would say the, the thing that kicked the ball down the, down the hill was just having the desire to put myself out there. Um, you know, like when I was 16, for example, I was obsessed with the show Showtime at the Apollo. Um, I thought it was so fun, like people could get booed off the stage. It was just like this crazy talent show that I loved watching and I was determined to be on the show. I would sneak down actually like late at night and watch it because it came out at, on midnight every night. And so I had this dream like, I'm gonna be in Showtime at the Apollo. Like, what can I do to, to make that happen? Um, and I just Googled Show Timothy Apollo auditions and I found a place that I could submit an audition and that ended up um, getting me on the show. So then I was on Show Timothy Apollo in New York and like because I was on that show that led me to like meeting, um, you know, other people in the industry which led me to the next thing. So it's just like everything you do is gonna lead you um, down your right path. And sometimes like I have lost my way many times and I have fallen down and I have, made the wrong decision and I have done things that in my career that, that I wasn't super proud of, like really certain songs that I didn't really love later or whatever. But all of the times where I fell on my path, I was still on the right path because it was something that I needed to learn. It was like, there's this, I really believe that there's a silver lining to everything that you go through. Um, if again, you just look at it in a way of like, okay, what was the universe or whatever you believe in trying to teach me. Like, what do I need to learn to keep growing and going? You will learn the tools you need to reach the place that you're trying to go. And everyone, everyone's path operates on their own time. I used to compare myself to people so much and it held me back a lot because I was so um, stressed like, oh, this person, you know, has more followers or is that a bigger place in their career? And like, I, sh should, I, should I have that too? Like, am I doing something wrong because I'm not there yet? Like, oh no, you know, and then I start getting in my head and I do this motion because it, it's, you start closing yourself off when you do that. But I, again, in a, in a practice, have learned to not compare myself to others and just step into my own confidence and my own timing and love the way that, that my career and life is un unfolding. And that like open mentality of curiosity and wonder and all those things like has brought so many more things into my life that I never would have expected. A big challenge that I had to overcome on this journey, um, I was signed to Capitol Records about two years ago, year and a half ago, and I thought it was gonna be this moment, you know, where all my dreams were coming true. Um, like my, I was gonna break big as an artist, um, but I put out a song with them and it didn't do as well as the label had hoped and then I ended up getting dropped. And I had to take that moment as an opportunity to grow and find the resilience story with, within that for myself to keep going on my artist journey. And, and honestly, like getting dropped was the best thing that could have happened to me because it gave me the inspiration to, um, do this artist thing and this singer stuff like the, the way that I wanted to do it and be myself completely. Um, so yeah, that was that was kind of a turning point for me of, you know what, like, I'm gonna keep going. I'm, I'm gonna, I have even more drive now because this happened. And I'm, I'm honestly grateful <laughs> that, that they signed me because I learned a lot and I'm grateful that I got dropped because it helped me make this album that I'm about to release. An accomplishment that I'm proud of. I'm really proud of this music that I am putting out right now. I love The Social Experiment. I love Chance and the other features that are on the album, which I'll let you discover when you listen to the album. But I just feel very proud that I made this project with friends who feel like family to me. And the fact that I got to sort of do this journey through making the album of like, of finding my way back home to myself. And I'm proud of the, um, the drive and like the commitment to that journey. I think success to me is staying grounded in this curious mindset. Like no matter what happens, continuing to have the thread of, oh, I wonder what that would be like. <laughs> like and, and like through having that sort of curious mindset, I think that that will um, 
keep me active as a creator, which is really like at the end of the day, that's what I, that's what I want to be, an artist, a creator. Like I just want to keep sharing music with people. I want to be singing live on stages, c connecting with audiences. And I think that the curious mindset will be the thing that leads me to whatever success is. Dreamer is an amazing platform. It's an amazing app. Um, one of the things that I love the most about Dreamer is how positive it is. There's this community of people who are all trying to pursue their dreams and putting themselves out there. You know, it can be sort of an intimidating thing to declare your dream out loud. And you might not even realize that until you open up the app and like press record and you have to say like, hey, my dream is, you know, fill in the blank. And I've had the same dream forever. And I was even kind of nervous and intimidated and awkward to like put it, put it out there like that. But when I put it out there on the app, the flooding of positive comments and support that came in was so encouraging and made me feel so much more confident in that vulnerable step that I took, you know? Like, I feel like we, we grow in confidence when you have a support system around you, applauding you as you reveal sides of yourself that you're a little afraid to reveal. Um, and sometimes you can retreat from confidence when you do that and people kind of make fun of you and stuff, like what can happen in like middle school, things like that. Um, so Dreamer is a place where you can step into confidence you can own your dream, own who you are completely. And honestly, declaring, when I declared my dream about a year ago on the app, since then, the things that have happened, like I released a song with Chance the Rapper, um, Addison Ray posted one of my songs on TikTok. I ended up linking up with this amazing distribution company called United Masters that's been supporting me um, as an independent artist. And I'm, I own all my masters and all these like really magical, cool things have happened since I declared my dream. And I honestly credit a lot of it to declaring it on the app. So declare your dream today and see all of the magical manifestations that start falling into your lap. My piece of advice would be staying on theme, stay curious, replace ambition with curiosity, put yourself out there in the most vulnerable ways that you can and see um, what can come from that because it's going to be a really magical experience. And um, if you fall on your path, if you lose your way, just know that 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 is also a part of your path. Like losing your way can sometimes be the thing that you needed to happen to find your way. So that's what I would say. And just sing your heart out, do what you love. Hey, I'm Grace Weber and you just watched my Behind the Dream at the Dreamer House.